Hi there, welcome to this build of a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now the quiver is a scaled down version of the iconic 1930s Quaker. And we're building this quiver from a great set of plans that we downloaded from the Outer Zone website. And if you want a free copy of these, have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to the plans and also uh, a build article and that's on Outer Zone. Now we've got to the stage in this build where most or if not all of the balsa construction is finished and we've started to do some of the covering which is really exciting and in the last video we got this wing covered in Doculam. Now Doculam is a laminating film and this is 38 micron laminating film which has got its own glue and it shrinks and stretches just like a covering film but it's really cheap. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start covering it with a tissue and I'm going to be using an Asuka, a Japanese Asuka tissue which is a really high quality tissue. It's absolutely lovely to use. And we're gonna be covering it in these two colors, so nice and bright. And this tissue I get from Free Flight Supplies in the UK. And if you have a look in the description below the video, I'll provide a link to uh, where you can get the tissue from. Now, I'm going to be doing a traditional design and a design that's presented on the original Quaker plans in I think it's 1936 or 1937. And if you have a look at this here, you can see that on the wings, there's a scallop design and we're gonna be mimicking that scallop design. And if we have a look at the black and white kind of photograph of the model itself or drawing of the model itself, you can see that the scallops on the front of that are actually a lighter colour or appear to be a lighter colour than the bit on the back of the wing. So I think we're going to be following that design and on that black and white image you can't see whether it's, uh, well you can't see the colour because it's black and white obviously. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing that scallop along the front in the yellow and I'm going to be doing the back section in red. So that's going to be really interesting because the red is the more dominant colour perhaps and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. But I've been doing a little bit of preparation for how I'm going to put the scallops on and the, the tissue on and I'll, we'll have a look at that in just a second. And I should say the reason I'm putting the tissue over the laminating film is because it gives it a lot more strength than just the tissue itself. Now, we could fly it just with the laminating film, there's no reason why you can't, but I want to do a, tra a, a traditional looking model, a vintage looking model, and so I want to get that tissue covering. When I put the, uh, the tissue on, I'm going to be wetting it, getting it in position, and then I'm going to be using a water-based polyurethane. But we'll have a look at that as time goes on and we do start putting the, the tissue on. So now let's have a look at the templates I've been making to get this design on. Well I've got a printout here of the 1936 design. This is off the 1936 plans. And you can see the scalloped here with the points lining up with the ribs and comes along and then it just comes right down to the edge of the fuselage here and then you've got one big scallop over the top of the fuselage. So that's what we're going to mimic. Now I've done a couple of templates and what we're going to do is we're going to have that piece of yellow at the front and again we've got the scallops lined up with the, the ribs with the exception of here. The point of the scallop here doesn't line up with the rib because the way we built this wing this space here is a lot smaller than on the original plans where it's equally spaced. And so to make it look right, we've moved that point off the rib. Now we've allowed, this is gonna be yellow, 
and we've allowed a little bit here to wrap around the underside but that essentially will go on like that and we'll have just a little bit of overlap onto this balsa because we're going to have a seam here I don't think it's worth trying to put this on and because of the curve that way and then we have a curve that way we're going to have problems here so we're going to have a seam and this central bit here will be separate on the underside we'll probably do it as one because we're looking at the top surface now but we're going to do the underside and the top surface with exactly the same design we'll probably do the underside first because it'll be easier and like i say on the underside we we, we may do that in one piece now I'm going to cut the yellow like that. We can see this line here, which lines up with the front of the wing, and then we've got that bit to wrap around. And I'm going to put the yellow on first, like that. I'm then going to cut a piece for the red, and I've left a decent overlap here. Now, I, I was in two minds whether to try and cut the tissue into the scallops like that, while still leaving an overlap. But I've done some experimentation on a, a sort of a scrap wing and here we've got the red on top of the yellow and there and actually the yellow doesn't show through that much. If we put the yellow on top of the red it shows up more but I think because the yellow doesn't show through the red that much it'll be okay just to do this general line and then we'll get the red and we will put the red over the top like that and yeah over the top like that and I'll probably leave a little bit excess here just to wrap around and that will go on like that and again a bit to uh, fold under as we do it we'll then as I said and I haven't done the templates for this we'll do this central bit so we'll have uh, the yellow coming up on the top and the a red bit in the bottom just as we've got on the design here so I'm going to get this cut out in tissue now and we will uh, we'll get that yellow piece on first because that's going to be the hardest piece I think looking at the the seams that I've done on my test piece I think when we have the seam here between the central portion and the wing I don't think it will show I've, I've just kept it down to eighth of an inch just a few mil so hopefully that won't be too uh, too obvious so i'll get the tissue cut now and then we'll have a look at getting this front piece on like i said i'm going to be doing the underside first i think because i mean i'm showing you on top of the wing but the underside is flat and it will be a lot easier but it's exactly the same shape as the um uh, as the top side like that. Right, well I've got my tissue on the bench, on my cutting mat, and I've got the uh, template on top of this held down with a couple of weights. And I'm putting a brand new blade in my scalpel because we want to get a nice clean cut along this line, as clean as possible. If we rip it or get it ragged, we can always trim it a little bit because there's a little bit of leeway here, but we want to try and get that as nice as possible and I've lined this up with the edge of the fuselage here and this bit on this side we'll probably just leave it long and just hang it down off the end of the wing as you can see this is the edge of the wing here so and it's also worth noting this tissue I ironed it last night and then just left it and you can see the creases are still in there but they're a lot less than they were and these creases will disappear once we start to uh, to wet it and to put on the polyurethane so don't worry about the creases and we have to be mindful that tissue has a grain and the grain on this is going the length of the the longest uh, uh, in line with the longest side so it's going that way essentially um, so and if we don't get the grains right it won't look right so I mean with these pieces we can only get them out of the longest direction but when we come to do that central section we need to make sure the grain is correct so let me start cutting this now and I find that when we're cutting things like that the lower the angle of the blade the better the cut whether it's fill or whether it's tissue like this 
So we're just going to run around the edge of this template. And you see that's cutting really nice, but it is really important to get a nice sharp blade. I'm just going to move this weight because it's in the way. Very excited to get this done. I'm, I've really been looking forward to this and it's nice to do a design which is sort of a traditional, you know, from the original, uh, from the original Quaker back in the 1930s. Okay. So now we can bring that straight across. There. Now hopefully, yeah, that should. I just need to do this piece now, here, and I'll just bring that straight across. Uh, can I do that? Yeah. There we go. And now we can just lift that tissue off, and we've now got our piece to go on the wing. So what I will do is I will probably get this piece on first before I cut the second uh, one and the third and the fourth because we're going to do this design both wings top and bottom. I'll get this one on first just to make sure that it goes on okay and uh, we're not wasting tissue. What I'm going to do now is I will do the, uh, the bottom piece the same and then we'll get this get the wing set up and we'll start to put that bit of tissue on the front. Right, I've got my tissue cut now and I'm ready to start putting it on but I've got the wing on a towel to protect it and as stop it sliding or at least limit it sliding and I've got towels here and a cloth on top just to try and hold it as, uh, as secure as possible. Now I've decided to do this underside in uh, separate sections so I've got the wing, the wing and then I'm going to do that central section. I'm not going to do it as uh, as part of the wing and the reason being I could do because it's a, a, an easy um, transition but I want to kind of mimic how I'm going to have to do it on the top just to see how it works and how it looks. So first of all we've got this yellow which we're going to need to put on, I think, like that. Now, one of my concerns with this, uh, <laughs> one of many, um, is that we're lining these scallops with the ribs, but the tissue uh, will expand a little bit as it gets wet, and it will shrink a little bit as it dries and as the polyurethane dries. So, I don't know how that's going to affect the uh, the movement of these points with the ribs. But anyway, this now hopefully is, let's just get that lined up, uh, is hopefully there. I think that's how that is going to be. I may need to trim this a little bit more here just to get a little bit more of a, a point on that end but I will do that once we've got the yellow one. But you can see essentially how that is going to look. And actually, that's quite exciting. And if I just get a bit of yellow, the yellow is quite, um, I wouldn't say insipid, but it's not quite as bright. But if you can see, as I move the yellow underneath, that becomes darker. So that is one of the reasons I'm doing the top and the bottom, just to increase the, uh, the vibrancy of that yellow. Hopefully you can see how that changes. So I will make sure I've got this yellow lined up and then we'll spray it with water and we'll get it nicely flattened. I think the trick is to just make sure I've got this front edge at the right level so it doesn't come around too much. So it needs to come this way perhaps a little bit, um, but I'll have a look at that. Right, I've got that exactly where I want it now. And I've got a five millimeter overlap on the front which will just bring that edge around but not too much and we've got a little bit of an overlap down here and the wing I think is probably just right 
just on this tip but it's, it's not that critical so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spray it with water and hope I'm just going to do it a little bit I don't want to go mad because I don't want it to um, uh, I don't want it to move if I do it a big waft of water it could uh, it could sort of move the tissue and I've got it nicely lined up so I'm just doing it very very gently but we want to get it all nice and wet now I could do it a bit more now and we can see this is expanding already with the water so it's going to be really interesting to see how those uh, how those points line up with the ribs and I'm just going to do a little bit along the underside here oops that wasn't good just to make sure that wraps around nicely now this tissue is wet strength it's it's really is quite a nice strong tissue and we can just if we need to to reposition it we can pick it up I'm going to be very careful here and just fold this back There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to fiddle with this much more for a second. I'm going to leave this a 10 minutes or so and just make sure it, it just soaks in really nicely. So uh, and it just really relaxes it. And then we'll come back and we'll smooth it out. We'll get rid of any bubbles. We may have to lift it up and put it back down, but we'll see how it goes. Right, well that's been soaking now for probably about 10 minutes so I'm just going to start smoothing it out and getting rid of any bubbles or wrinkles just and a nice broad brush like this one or even even broader to be honest is uh, is good so I'm just going to brush this out now and just make sure that, uh, that it's all lying flat and exactly where we want it before we start brushing on the polyurethane. Right, I've just lifted it up now and just put it on this cloth just so we can get this wrapped around and hanging over. Now that is looking pretty good. But I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. And I'm just going to spray some water on this, on that underside there, just to help the, uh, help it relax and stick to that edge. Now this is pretty wet now, but we're going to leave it just a little bit longer and uh, then we'll come back for a final smooth before we put the polyurethane on. When I start varnishing this in a bit I'm going to use this Wilco quick drying varnish and it's water soluble it washes out under the under the tap really easily doesn't smell really nice to use and I'm using the clear gloss for the first coat but the subsequent co uh, coats I'm going to be using either matte or silk I'm not sure yet which finish I'm going to plump for in the end but this is really nice and I've used it on diesel models and my uh, spark ignition engines and that it with the petrol and it's uh, it's certainly fuel proof which is great so I will just give this little bit bit of a, a brush now and then I will uh, I will just dab it with a cloth and just dry it out but I can't see any wrinkles or bubbles in that now that's looking quite good so I'm just going to put a bit of tissue on it and try and get rid of some of this excess water without, without moving and picking up the tissue. Time to start putting the polyurethane on and I gave this a stir earlier. Don't shake it, you'll get it full of bubbles which will just add complications. So ready to start putting this on now and just very very thinly Now, as we do this, we're going to start to see bubbles forming under the tissue. And what we need to do is we just need to work those bubbles to get those 
get them out and they will disappear. And once we've got the polyurethane on and we've got it nice and bubble free, we mustn't walk away. We need to keep watching this because bubbles could come back and most likely some bubbles will come back. So we just need to be really on the ball here to make sure that we don't, uh, don't get a finish with bubbles in it. Right, hopefully you can see now that we're bubble free on this side and I've got all the bubbles out. You just don't be too keen to, to, to rush to get the bubbles out. Just let the polyurethane soak in and then once it's soak, soaked in we can just go along and the bubbles will just wipe out and you can see them disappearing as I brush it just very gently with a soft brush. But as I say we want to keep an eye on this because we bubbles can come back so it's uh, it, we just have to just have to watch it for a bit until it starts to uh, until it starts to go off this is quick drying and we can give it another coat if we want in four hours and within an hour it will be dry although it does take very slightly longer when we've wet it like this but certainly the second and third coats dry a lot quicker. Right, well I think we are ready to leave this now and let it dry and just see uh, how it goes while we're doing it, why it is dry and just like as I said, I know I keep saying this, but it really is important at this stage that we just keep an eye on it. I'm going to stop fiddling with it now, we're going to keep an eye on it and just make sure no bubbles form and if they do we will just just noticed a little bit of a water bubble there which I've got out but we'll just need to make sure no bubbles fall and as this is almost dry we'll come around and we'll deal with this uh, this wing tip right well, this is starting to dry off really nice uh, it's still a little bit tacky I don't know whether you can hear that but what I'm going to do now is start to trim the excess tissue and I'll start with this bit here which is nice and easy I'm just going to pull it and use a scalpel and just cut that really easily like that. And I'm going to go round the wing tip and do exactly the same. And if I end up with a jagged edge or something a little bit rough, that's not a problem because when the polyurethane has dried, I can go round it with a hot iron and it just melts the polyurethane a little bit and just sits it back down again. So anyway, I will go round and just trim this. Obviously we need to be so so careful that we don't um, don't damage the uh, the laminating film. And if this tears a little bit and looks a little bit jagged, that is probably preferable because it, it just thins out the fibres and you don't end up with a kind of a, a really stark cut line but either is fine. There you can see I'm just going around with that now and just smoothing that down. In fact I'll just zoom in a little bit. There you go so I'm just pulling that and just sliding around with a scalpel and just cutting the tissue. There we go, and just smooth it down and any creases and wrinkles will just disappear. So I will get this done now and then we'll come back and we'll have a look once it's dry. Right, well this yellow now is, uh, is dry to the touch. It, it still feels slightly damp but it's, it's dry to the touch. But I don't want to do anything else with this now until it really has dried and it's had a few hours. So I'm not going to put the red on now, I'm not going to give it another coat. What I'm going to do is work on the yellow for the other wing and for this central section. Because I can do that without disturbing this. But what we can do is we can just try the tissue for size, the red and see what it's uh, see what it's going to look like 
but like I say I'll, I won't put this on until some point tomorrow and I guess that is going to go on something like like that um, I may need to cut that a little bit but you can you get the idea of what it's going to look like I don't know what this will look like on the finished model when it's all done but hopefully it'll look good so once I've got the rest of the yellow on the underside we'll come back and we'll have a look at it right, well I got the underside yellow totally finished last night and this has had overnight now drying and it's looking really nice I'm really pleased with it so what I'm going to be doing today is getting the two bits of red on and I'm going to be using exactly the same techniques as I used before but it's going to be kind of interesting really and a bit of a voyage of discovery I'm just lining this up on here because you can see the the scallops there line up with the ribs I, I mean I showed this earlier but it's going to be really interesting to see how much the tissue expands as I get it wet and whether we lose the alignment of the indent of the scallops with the ribs now it's good that we're doing this on the underside first because we can see how much movement there is stretch and if it shrinks back and how it responds and maybe after I've done this I will modify my template for when I'm doing it on the top surface I mean I hope I don't have to because you know it's a bit of work to do that and then we might modify it and it might stretch differently because the wing surface on the top is curved it's slightly different who knows but as I said this has gone on really really nice and I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's looking and I did the whole front section in one piece so what I'm going to do now is I'll get the red on as I said exactly the same technique and we'll come back once it's dried and we'll have a look at that and see what's happened with the stretch if any hopefully not right well I thought it was worth doing a quick update on how I've put this red on it's just been wet at the moment there's no polyurethane at all and it doesn't seem to have stretched it looked like it was it was bubbling up but actually we're still lined up with all the ribs nicely so I'm really really pleased about that but one thing that I hadn't expected is that it to get the wrinkles out sometimes or quite often I have to just pull it a little bit from the end or just lift it up and, and just push it down again but I really was reluctant to do that because of these indents I just thought it's a recipe for it tearing and when I did try to lift up right at the very end one of these um, uh, 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 bits of the scallops just kind of folded under and and it was a bit awkward so I ended up just absolutely wetting this totally and almost floating it on the wing that much water so that I could brush it and it would move around nicely to get all the bubbles out and the wrinkles without actually lifting it up but as a consequence of that it was quite wet and I've gone around several times with paper towel and just made sure I got uh, all that excess water out and um, and I've just left it a little bit now just to dry off because it really was quite wet uh, so it, it's uh, I, ju I just thought I'd let you know that that it had gone on well but I really had to float it and then dry it out so now I'm probably about right to get that polyurethane on right I've now got the covering on this and I am really really pleased it went on absolutely lovely uh, it, it couldn't have been better, I had no problems at all. It's still a little bit damp on this side, the polyurethane, because it hasn't quite dried yet, so I need to be a little bit careful there. And the, it's a little bit uneven, the finish at the moment, the polyurethane, and it will be until I get the next coat on, and then it will look uh, even better than it does at the moment. Now you can see the yellow here is, uh, you can see through it, it's quite pale. But look what happens when I pick up a bit of tissue and just put that on the top surface like we'll do tomorrow. It just becomes a lot more vibrant. And so it's going to be really exciting to start to get this covering on the, on, on the top surface. Now I'm not going to touch this again today. I'm going to leave it overnight and make sure it's absolutely dry. And then tomorrow I will get these two yellow panels on here 
and we'll see how that goes. Well I've now got the uh, yellow on the front and I'm just smoothing it down after wetting it with, uh, with just the tap water and this has gone on absolutely lovely so I thought I would just do a very quick update just to show how it's going. I'm really pleased. I thought I might get some wrinkles I'd have to work with in between the ribs just as the film dips a little but it's ab gone on absolutely fine. So can't wait to crack on now and get the um, get the varnish on it and then start the other side. Right well, I've now got the yellow finished on the top of the wing. This central portion I haven't long put on so it's still a little bit wet, a little bit tacky, but these have dried off now and I'm really pleased with the way that's looking and I can't wait to get the red on and looking at the clock there's probably still time today to get that red on but I think because I'm going to put so much water on probably when I, uh, when I put it on I want to make sure this is absolutely right so I am going to leave it till tomorrow. Last thing we want to do is mess this up now we've got this far but I'm really pleased with the way this is looking so far so first thing tomorrow well when I've had a coffee after I've had a coffee I'm going to be getting this red on and I can't wait to get this finished and see how it looks well, I'm just getting the second side of the red put on and I've decided not to spray it with water straight off like I did on the underside and like I've always done uh, putting tissue on I've decided to brush the water on and by doing that you can see I've done it on this side um, or you can see part of the wing but I, I did it on that side and it allowed me to put the tissue down a lot um, a lot more precisely without getting the the big wrinkles that I, I had before which caused me a little bit of an issue because I didn't want to lift it up because I was worried about these indents and that it was a, a, a recipe to get it ripped. So I found starting in the middle and just brushing the, the water on like this and working out to the outside edges was quite good in avoiding getting, um, getting wrinkles. So I thought I'd just, I'd just up, do a quick update. So I'm going to get on now and uh, and get this wet and get this uh, get this side polyurethane and then we're just left with that central section I can't wait to get this finished now and uh, and to see how it looks well I had a great day yesterday I was at the airfield from early until uh, sort of mid-afternoon and then I came home and I got the wing finished got the red scallops on the top of the wing and I'm really pleased with how that's gone on and we can see the underside the similar pattern but that's gone on lovely I'm really pleased with it and I've decided to go with a silk finish this time if you've seen my other builds when I did the build of the Diamond Demon and I used a similar technique to this I actually did matte and the matte looks absolutely lovely but I just thought I would try the silk it's just got perhaps a little bit more sealed and repel the oil from the diesel a little bit more. I mean the polyurethane is diesel proof anyway but I was just thinking the silk might make it just clean up a little bit better. And I quite fancied just having a little bit of a shine rather than that dead flat matte. I obviously don't want it glossy. But as you can see I, I'm really pleased with how that's gone on and um, you can see from the big smile on my face and now we have to try it on the fuselage and just see what it looks like now this has had the uh, one other coat on top of the initial coat when I stuck the tissue down I may give it one more final coat so it's had three coats but the, the final coats will be very very thin just touching it really so anyway there we go look we can see how that looks now when I started out on this I was very keen to do this design which is shown on the 1936 uh, Quaker plans of which this is a, a scaled down version and those plans did show this lighter section 
on the front and the more dominant colour on the back, but they were black and white. So I made the colours up to fit this pattern. And I was apprehensive about how that would look with the, uh, the dominant colour on the back. But I'm really pleased. It's really grown on me as I started to do this. And I can't wait now to get the tailplane and fin covered as well. And that's going to be the focus of the next video. Or the start of it will be the focus where I get the laminating film on. And the technique I'm going to use to put the laminating film on these is going to be slightly different to how I did the wings. So anyway, I'm going to draw this video to a close now. And uh, I hope you found it interesting. And please come back and see how we get on in, uh, in covering the tailplane and the, uh, the fin of this lovely uh, vintage model, the, uh, the quiver.